Hi, uh, this is a view of a uh, combination router milling machine that I just completed. Uh, you can see it's got a polycarbonate um, frame framework uh, cover all the way around it and it's uh, transparent so you can see everything that's going on inside uh, without any obstruction. These, uh, these latches unlatch the door here. And uh, there's the handle I just put on it. And uh, I made it so it swings down out of the way and uh, completely gets out of my way so I have full access to the machine all the way across. This machine was built by me, designed by me, and uh, all the parts are sourced. It's not based on any other design. I uh, completely came up with it on my own. Uh, I have built a router previously, actually built two, two different routers previously, and I was never happy with the uh, inability to use normal milling tooling like this uh, two inch diameter cutter here would be impossible on a uh, router. And uh, also drilling is very difficult on a router, just you can't get the RPM low enough and they have no torque. So uh, I chose to use a SAG X2 milling head that I got from Little Machine Shop Dot com. It has a high and a low range, a one-to-one -one, uh, input to output, and a two-to-one uh, reduced output. So if the motor's spinning at 3,000 RPM, you get 1,500 RPM out of the uh, shaft there. This is a digital RPM counter. Uh, basically, all I did was bought it off of Amazon for 15 bucks and put it in that case. And uh, there's a pickup back here behind the spindle. That little thing with the light on back there is the pickup and then there's a, um, a magnet I encased in epoxy and drilled a little divot in there to uh, a recess so the magnet would sit flush and not cause me any problems and uh, so there's the motor the motor is a one and a half horsepower treadmill motor um, I added these um, proximity sensors and basically what they do is they bounce a, a, a beam a uh, electromagnetic beam off of whatever surface they get close to and then it triggers it and tells the computer uh, software that that axis is now zero, zeroed out. I have uh, ball screws and uh, they're 1605 ball screws, or about 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, but they're metric, 16 millimeter. I uh, have zero backlash couplings, and there is a uh, servo motor. It's got a thousand line encoder on top of it, and that's for positioning. Uh, let's see. Here's the X axis, same deal. It's a. Uh, 455 ounce inch servo motor and uh, there's the uh, bearing block and you can see it's on linear rails these are 20 millimeter diameter rails here and they're made out of very hard steel almost tool steel and then they ride on these uh, bearing blocks they have recirculating ball bearings in them and it's very smooth and and doesn't take a lot of energy to get it going. Uh, not a lot of torque is required, so you can actually spin them with your fingers and move the axis. These are way covers that I devised. This is just a, a temporary solution that I came up with. It's a, uh, a blackout curtain that you can get off of Amazon for 10 bucks because I ordered this stuff and uh, it's a fabric, kind of like a very tough fabric and uh, I didn't get enough of it because uh, based on the measurements that they gave on the website I ordered uh, sm smaller pieces than I actually needed so uh, I think I got a little bad deal on that but I uh, won't go into that so I have one two three linear bearings the measurement of the table is um, 24 inches long and uh, 11 and a quarter inches wide.
I mean, uh, excuse me, 23 and a quarter inches wide. This is a Kurt Vice, and uh, it can, it's a six inch wide by 8.8 .8 opening vise, a very nice uh, uh, brand new vise that I got right off of Kurt's website as a second because they said it had porosity. I've been looking all over this thing and I found what maybe a little bit of porosity but by my standards it's almost non-existent but I guess Kurt has higher standards. See there it is down there in the bottom it's just got a little bit of porosity in there so they could they, their standards say they can't sell that as a perfect item so I got a, about a half half off on that including delivery Okay, so uh, let's walk, keep walking around here. Here's a zero height gauge that I plan on using to set the Z height on my tools. You can see uh, it's got a little dial indicator. And when you get it to zero, then your tool's exactly two inches off of whatever surface you set it on. And uh, that'll come in handy. You can see the construction of this. I used really small, really strong... Uh, triangulated gussets and then there's a, a quarter inch plate that actually has four screws going into the 80-20 beam on the bottom going up and then I, I drilled and tapped two holes directly into the vertical beam here at the bottom going up so it doesn't move. This thing is, is extremely um, strong and stout. I have triangulated uh, gussets in every corner. There's one internal here and then this outer plate here is made out of 3 8 60-61 aluminum and with these rails mounted to it this whole thing is extremely rigid and uh, doesn't move at all I mean literally so the top speed on this uh, with the treadmill motor I have set to 3500 rpm which by router standards is pretty low but normal milling speeds a normal mill will do around or 5,000 RPM so 3,500 RPM is pretty pretty decent speed for a little milling head like that and uh, because it's R8 I can use all the tooling all the different tooling I want in their standard tooling so here's my uh, controller I'm running Mach 3 and uh, I built this controller uh, cabinet and the controller from scratch it's all my own design it's basically built out of U-channel on the sides, and then I drilled holes for ventilation. I've got a 110-volt uh, PC-style uh, fan sucking air uh, through the holes and out the top here. And then there's a hole for the power supply to have its, its own ventilation. And uh, it never even starts the uh, fan on the, on the, uh, on the uh, power supply, so pretty happy with that. This is a known as an MDI pendant. It's a manual digital input, and uh, I set it for whatever axis I'm trying to control. And as you can see, when I rotate this wheel, the uh, the axis responds, and I can set the resolution down to where it moves in one tenth of an inch increments, or one thousandth of an inch increments, or one one hundredth of an inch increments. So uh, by switching this to the um, Z axis here, see that I just switched it to Z. Now I'm controlling the, the Z axis. It's very smooth. And uh, I can't crash it because I've set it to have soft limits. It knows when it's getting to a zero point and it will just stop. See? I can't crash it into the uh, Z. I can't crash it going down either, which I'm not going to demonstrate because it would cause that tool to hit my brand new vise, and uh, we're not going there. In fact, let me switch this to the um, X axis. And uh, there's the X axis. I've been working on this machine for around four, a little over four months. And I'm uh, pretty happy with it. I've got it down to, I've checked the uh, the vise to the milling head with an indicator. And I'm within uh, less than two thousandths of an inch. 
deviation from front to back and uh, pretty much zero in this this axis it's zeroed out perfectly uh, I can live with that considering that that Chinese uh, made spindle head is probably not going to hold more than a thousandth of an inch anyway uh, of run out so that's all technical stuff um, that machinists know about anyway uh, I'm pretty happy with it I got this table for um, 80 bucks off of Amazon it was it's really heavy construction it's made out of stainless steel I'm very happy with that and then for high-speed milling I have basically it's a, a gear um, system inside here planetary gear system and when this shaft turns one time that shaft turns seven times so if you take it up to 1,000 RPM on this shaft, you get 7,000 RPM. And the max speed on this is 10,000 RPM. They don't recommend you run it above that. So um, I'll be keeping it around, you know, less than 8, you know, probably 5,000, 6,000 RPM for most of my cutting. And then it comes with these collets. It's a very precision. In fact, when this thing was new, I got it used off of Amazon, or off of eBay, rather. When it was new, it cost much more than my entire machine cost to build. I'm sure it cost into the several $4,000 range when it was new. And uh, I got it for a couple hundred bucks off of, uh, eBay in an auction. So uh, pretty happy with that purchase. I've had it for four or five years now. and Haven't had a need to use it very much. But uh, I mounted it up and it works perfectly on the, uh, on the spindle. And so to, to cut with much smaller ball end mills and... Uh, Anyway, that's the overview of my machine. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun building it. And uh, it's got this interior enclosure. This, this thing lifts out here. It's just a piece of plastic uh, polycarbonate stuck in there, but it's, the polycarbon is extremely tough. In fact, if you get it thick enough, it's, it's bulletproof. And uh, this being a quarter inch thick, if that tool there were to come apart, this uh, polycarbonate case here would more than handle that, um, you know, going ballistic and trying to take out the room. But um, I don't see that happening running at 3,000 RPM, but at 10,000 RPM, if the tool come apart, it might be a problem. Anyway, uh, any questions, post them below. Um, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.